Right up. see you be encouraged in Jesus name. Okay, let's get into a short prophecy update. We're going to start talking a little bit about uh, what's going on in the world. We have France's President Macron. <laughs> that guy just cracks me up. He says that he will govern like a Roman god. He is the one who is actually suggesting this 10 nation EU super state. Um, he does a real good impression of an antichrist, but he doesn't qualify, but he sure is going to be instrumental in making prophecy come to pass. So um, he's a real interesting character to watch. Um, he says that he has this superior knowledge. <laughs> we'll see, won't we? We'll see. Well, we know that you've got uh, Luciferians out there and uh, among the world leaders. That's kind of always been a given because it Satan's the one, according to Luke chapter 4. Let's buzz over there real quick. Luke chapter 4. And you'll notice here... I believe it's verse five that it is given over to Satan and to who is appointed as world leaders. Let's go ahead and look in Luke chapter four. Uh, this is the passage where the devil takes Jesus up onto a high mountain in verse five. And the devil taking him up unto a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He's showing Jesus. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So he is saying right there to Jesus and Jesus didn't argue with him. Okay, Jesus didn't say, no, it's not yours. The devil says in verse seven, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. So Satan was said that if Jesus would bow down and worship him, he would give him all of the kingdoms of the world. Well, they belong to him already anyway. <laughs> and so Jesus told him to stick it, basically. I'm so proud of him, aren't you? But the point is, is that these world leaders, there's only two sides. You have all the leaders of the world on one side, and then you have Jesus on the other side. And so uh, they all do the will of God, as does Satan, okay, who... God is um, in full control, but he chose to give the devil power. 
it says, and the devil said unto him, for all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me. It had to be God that gave it to him and to whomsoever I will, I give it. And that's why you don't get to be a world leader unless you're willing to bow to Satan. Um, because he chooses who's going to be a world leader and who isn't. And I really didn't understand what this passage was saying until I saw the footage uh, that Alex Jones captured years ago of the world's leaders at Bohemian Grove in hooded robes, bowing before a 40-foot stone statue of an owl and dancing around a campfire like a bunch of medieval heathens. Yeah, I wouldn't I would never have believed it if I hadn't seen it on the footage he captured. I was shocked. But I guess I shouldn't have been because it it's just not it just doesn't seem possible that all of these world leaders are meeting and dancing around a campfire like a bunch of medieval heathens and making sacrifices uh, to their heathen god. <laughs> you think that's something that has to be, you know, from the dark ages, but uh, like I say, I wouldn't have believed it had I not seen the footage myself. Um. <laughs> that's not something the children of God are ever going to do. We're never going to bow and we'll die if we get in that position where we have to take the mark or die, we'll die. And Jesus said, <laughs> remember in John 11, 25, let's go over there. I mean, um, it is John 11, John 11, I think. Is it John 11? Yeah. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, that's Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? <laughs> that's a lot, isn't it? But to us, it shouldn't be. There, it's not a mistake and it's not just a happy coincidence that the prophetic generation who the scriptures were written for understands technology. Okay. If you understand the concept of virtual reality, you know, virtual worlds where you can put on the glasses and all of a sudden you're in the Alps experiencing skiing the Alps without getting hurt. But, um, it's a possibility because what he's saying here in verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He's the life. Okay. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you believe in Jesus, even though you die here, you're still alive outside of this world. Virtual reality. In verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I'm alive. I believe in him. That means I'm never going to die. Even if I separate from my body, I'm still alive outside of my range of perception. See, if you apply technology to what Jesus says, it makes perfect sense. So in 25, let's go look at this one more time. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now that means that those, you know, you can't believe in Jesus unless he personally, the father draws you to the son. That's absolutely necessary. And you must be born again. You must be born with the temple of God inside you for God to dwell within you. Okay. So if it's a virtual reality situation, you're alive in here. But if you die in here, you're still alive out there. And if you're living in here and you separate from your body, uh, you're still alive. You're alive outside this world and inside this world. If you leave this world, you're still alive on the outside of it. That's VR, virtual reality. It makes perfect sense. It's not 
it's not a coincidence that the prophetic generation must understand technology, have a basic concept of it uh, that's common in the population. And it is for our generation. Wow, these lights are hot. Ooh. Never let them see you sweat. <laughs> but <laughs> I got to have some air here. <laughs> Wow, these lights, man, they're hotter today than they usually feel for some weird reason. Okay, I wanted to run by you a couple of things this half hour in our prophecy update about what's going on in the world. We've got Trump pulling out of the Iran deal. We've got Macron suggesting what may end up being the Ten Kings. Now we're going to put pressure on Iran. Uh, Israel has just gone in and stolen half a ton of original documents from Iran, their entire nuclear archive. <laughs> Can you believe they got away with that, that they did that? Iran is all talk, okay? They have never once come back and retaliated. They're just all talk. And North Korea turned out to be all talk. Now, Trump's about to get a Nobel Peace Prize and meet with Kim Jong-un because he's suddenly very cooperative. I think the media hypes things up when they tell us, you know, the man speaks North Korean. They tell us what he said, but we don't know what he actually said. I think they uh, want us to feel all the time like we're this close to being at war. It's wars and rumors of wars. That's the timing that we're in right now. Wars and rumors of wars. But there will come a point at even tide trouble and before morning, he is not. And that's probably Assad and from Isaiah 17. But to look at a few things that's going on in the world, Canada <laughs> is apologizing for What's wrong with this thing? Canada is apologizing for not giving the Jews admittance when they fled from the Nazis. Better late than never, I guess. Netanyahu is surging in the polls after Trump withdraws from the Iran nuclear deal. That has been a very good thing for Netanyahu. North Korea has freed three U.S. detainees ahead of the Trump summit. Suddenly, Kim Jong-un, the little crazy dictator, is Mr. Cooperative. Isn't that interesting? But we know that in the last days when Armageddon is approaching, you have the a 200 million man army. No, it doesn't say from China. It says the kings of the east. So you're looking at North Korea, South Korea, China, Japan, Taiwan. Uh, all of these countries are going to be coming together across um, to Armageddon once we get that far down the road. Pope Francis, <laughs> he says gun owners can't call themselves Christians anymore. If you own a gun, you can't call yourself Christian according to uh, Snake in the Dress Francis, okay? Uh, stay puffed. He's got his nerve, doesn't he? <laughs> that's that's uh, according to Jews News. <laughs> Democrats openly sang national motto, In God We Trust, defends them. What a bunch of wimps. <laughs> you know, uh, if you're weak and wimpy, you whine and you moan and you groan and you complain until someone gets sick to death of hearing it enough to give you your way. And that's their method of doing things. <laughs> Believers in Christ should never be offended for any reason. We're dead. <laughs> We're dead in Christ. Uh, we, the word talks about not being offended. If you do not offend in word, you are a perfect person, perfect man, it says. But 
the tongue is a world of evil, isn't it? We just have to keep it under control. But I do think that's really wimpy of them uh, to say that they think the term in God we trust is offensive to them. Well, you know what? They offend me too, but I'll just have to get over it, and so will they. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I, I don't even give them that much consideration um, when they want to. They're offended by something, so they want the entire country to sacrifice something that has been a part of this nation for a long, long time, but they're offended, so they want us to just make them happy. Well, get over yourselves. I, I, you know, <laughs> that's just kind of how I see it. Um, they don't like me very much, though, you know. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, get this. The Soros Financed Group is warning Trump of consequences for bolting the Iran deal. Well, Soros needs to get over himself, too, doesn't he? He's warned Donald Trump that he will own the consequences of bolting the international nuclear accord. Plowshares Fund is financed by Soros Open Society Institute. That's the source. So consider the source and then disregard. Um, Iran nuclear. Merkel says Europe faces more duty. They say the withdrawal from the U.S. withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal shows Europe will face increasing responsibility to secure peace and seek political solutions to conflicts. Merkel underlined the commitment of Germany, France, and Britain to stick with the accord, but I don't think that that's going to last much longer. Uh, the Mormon Church. I'm sorry, but to tell you, but the Mar- the Mormons are a cult. <laughs> okay just like the Jehovah Witnesses are a cult. And I'll tell you how you know a cult, okay? Um, A cult is easily defined because it follows the teachings of a man rather than God. Um, The Mormon church follows the teachings of Joseph Smith, okay? Uh, The Bible is their secondary book. The uh, Jehovah Witnesses, they follow the teachings of Charles Taze Russell, and the Bible is their secondary book. And in the, in the case when you have a faith that is based on a man's visions and his uh, idea of God, uh, you have a cult. Anytime, that's why Islam is a cult. It's based on the teachings of Muhammad. It's a cult, okay? And technically, Catholicism is also a cult. So spin that around. Um, Let's see. I'm so proud of Trump dumping that Iran deal, aren't you? And, of course, Europe is scrambling. There is, in the second half, a marked absence of the United States of America being a prevalent force. It is the EU and the Ten Kings out of the revived Roman Empire that are in charge and the the main driving force in the world. So what happens to the USA? There's a few possibilities. One, we lose our president, God forbid, And we end up with someone in the White House that is such a wimp that they will not come to Israel's aid. Two, Yellowstone is a possibility. If Yellowstone goes up, that's pretty much it for us as far as our strength. And then the evacuation, the rapture of the believers, the Gentile believers born with the temple inside them, and all of the world's children. Uh, When that happens, it's going to take a huge, huge part of the American population, and that would sap our strength there, too, leaving nobody here who is willing to stand for Israel, okay? And that would leave a lot of Jews here who are going to have to run for their lives as well. Uh, The Jews who have not 
recognize Christ yet, they will. The word says that blindness in part has happened unto Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That's all of the Gentiles. Okay? All of the Gentiles born with the temple inside them. It has nothing to do with your behavior, your level of learning, or anything else except do you have the temple of God inside you from your first breath? If you do, you will be evacuated. Most people out there are children of God. Okay, this is a wheat field, not a tear field. Most people out there are children of God. Uh, but if they have the, the temple inside them and they are children of God, they're not going to be left here to die just because they have not been called and drawn to learn yet. They will be evacuated alive and brought back still alive to continue living during the millennium. Okay. So just because they don't know God yet, just because they don't, uh, have a, a knowledge base or understand all that matters is that temple on the inside of them. Okay. If they are children of God, they will be evacuated and then brought back to continue living their lives. Kind of like Noah and his family. Things are the same uh, now in this time as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the days when the son of man comes. Okay. So it's, it's very much like it was in the days of Noah. You know, in the days of Noah, they were doing genetic experimentation. We've mentioned this before, where you had, they were splicing genes and combining DNA of different creatures. That's where satyrs came from, half man, half goat. Centaurs, half man, half horse. Mermaids, half man, half, half fish. And now they're trying to combine half man, half sheep. What are they going to call that one? Who knows? But this mythology can be traced back to genetic experimentation. And they're doing it again now. Okay. It wasn't mystical. It's technology. Every time the age is about to wrap up three harvests. Okay, the first one was at the year 1500 after Adam and Eve and the great flood came. 120 years prior to the flood, technology was introduced. It takes about 120 years. It took Noah 120 years to build the ark. So by the time he had finished building the ark, they were to the point where we are now, technology wise. It's all been here before. Remember what Ecclesiastes 1.9 says? The thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. And the thing that hath been done is the thing that shall be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. Let me tell you the very, the very next verse after that. And it says... What is this? It says here in verse 10 of chapter 1 of Ecclesiastes. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. Nothing is new under the sun, including a space program, global communications, electricity, a global infrastructure, um, cell phones, computers, uh, all of these things, the internet, all, none of this is new to the world, okay? It's all been here before, but was wiped out in the flood. Second harvest, Noah and his family are used as the seed and 4,500 years go by. <coughs> Excuse me. 4,500 years go by and technology is introduced again. And now here we are wrapping up close to the 120th year since it was introduced. And now we're right back in the same, same mess again that they were before the flood where you've got genetic experimentation. Man is polluting 
the DNA structure of God's world. The GMO stuff, uh, he's, they're polluting the DNA of the food, of the creatures, of the vegetation. Notice chemtrails when they spray things. They are changing God's world to be something different than what he created it to be. And they have also destroyed the earth. And I use that in past tense because Fukushima Daiichi quadruple meltdown is irradiating and killing everything on the planet. They said, the scientists said 20 years, seven years ago, 13 years and everything on the earth will be dead. The human race will be extinct and even bacteria will not survive is what they say. They said they need 50 years to stop it and it's going to kill us all in 20. Well, there's no more time to push the prophecies off to the next generation and say, well, it has to be the next generation. It can't be the next generation. It has to be this generation. And Daniel's equation shows that Jesus is coming. He is coming. He's not going to let us go extinct. He knows about all of this, knew about all of this thousands of years ago, exactly how it would happen. And he's got this figured out. He's got this. Okay. He's coming to evacuate the children of God and all of the little children worldwide. And there will be some tares among them. You just can't. Uh, when tares and wheat are small little plants, you can't tell the difference between them. The reapers are to mark the tares that they can identify and bring the wheat into his barn. So we'll see how that goes. We're, um, let me see what else I can tell you here. Netanyahu went to meet Putin in Moscow. Argentina is in big trouble financially. They're right behind Venezuela. They're not doing well at all. You've got a new outbreak of Ebola that has killed 17 people in the Congo. Saudi Arabia is still intercepting Houthi missiles from Yemen, They're, which uh, they are an Iranian proxy, which is shooting missiles over Riyadh. <laughs> and Saudi Arabia has been intercepting them. They've been doing that for at least five weeks or more. And you may not see much about it on the news, but the Saudis are intercepting those missiles. Um, Trump has reimposed sanctions on Iran after withdrawing from the nuclear deal. Rock on, Mr. President. Um, very strong quake out of the coast of New Britain, Papua New Guinea. That was a 5.9. Um, we're going to take a real quick break, and we'll be back right after this. Don't worry. Straight up. 